So we want to take a step back a little bit and look at the kind of big picture of each question and have good goals, simple goals for each question that are easy to remember and will help you improve your score. So that's what we're going to do. You're going to have three simple goals for each question. But good news is that two of the goals are the same for all the questions. So the first two goals are the same for question one, two, three, and four. The first goal is to answer the question well. This sounds really simple and silly. You're like, of course I want to answer the question well. It's actually a bit more complicated than that. And the reason is because sometimes students don't answer the question. You're so concerned about, I need to use a template, I need to start this way, I need to do this, I need to do that, and you're not focused on answering the question. So students should be allowed to bring their cell phones to school. Do you agree or disagree? You want to make sure that you answer that question well. Or using the example of the ruby-throated hummingbird, describe bird migration. Notice how it doesn't say, you know, include two examples. Some students say, I have to include two examples for question three. If I don't include that, it's a problem. No, answer the question well. That's the first thing that you need to do. You need to answer the question well. It's not saying give two examples. It's not saying say everything that the, the, the professor said in the listening. It's saying answer the question well. Okay, so that's what you want to do for all the questions. So it's pretty simple, but I have to say that because I really want you to just remember that. That's the most important thing you want to do. Everything else is a kind of bonus. Second goal is to plan your starting sentence. So I'm going to give you some starting sentences for each question. This is for question one. I think, I believe, I feel that. You know, it asks for your opinion. Personally speaking, to be honest, you know, I never thought about this before, but, or in my opinion, all right, so that's how you want to start question one. Now, before I go to the other questions, again, I want to explain why this is important is because when you know how to start, it's going to really help you give a better answer because the TOEFL is kind of like weird, right? Uh, the TOEFL speaking says, okay, three, two, one, speak now. And it's really awkward. You're not used to kind of speaking on command. And it's, it's hard to start, right? It's hard, like, oh, okay, um, you know, so when you have a very strong idea of how you're going to start, it's going to make your life a lot easier and help you get off to a good beginning so you can give a good response for the rest of the answer. So that's why it's important. Just pick one of these and it'll fit for 99% of the questions. You know, pretty much always it'll fit for question one. Question two, again, answer the question well, plan your starting sentence. Here are two examples. The reading passage proposes a change to campus policy, or it looks like there's a change to the university campus. Uh, you see, or on the university campus, you see. So those are two examples of sentences that you can use pretty much every time for question two. Question three, answer the question well, have a starting sentence. The reading passage introduces, or according to the reading, bird migration is, or according to the reading, camouflage is, so you put the topic there, right? That's question three. So you can use these uh, phrases for pretty much any question three to start. In question four, the same thing, answer it well, have a starting sentence. Here's a couple of examples. The professor goes into a ton of detail about, or the professor goes into detail about. I had never heard of bird migration until now or I've never heard of camouflage until now, and it's kind of interesting. And then you keep speaking. In the lecture, the professor discusses, and then you talk about what the lecture discusses. So the same two goals. When you plan on how to start, it reduces anxiety and re improves your overall performance. When you know how to start, it should make you feel a bit more relaxed because at least you know how to start, and then the other words will come later. Okay, so the first step is always to have a strong introduction. That's the first step for all TOEFL speaking students who struggle with speaking and need to improve. Answer the question well, have a good introduction. The third goal. Now, the third goal is different for each question, for each question, one, two, three, four. So for question number one, the third goal is to take a side and stick to it. What do I mean? A lot of times they ask you, do you agree or disagree? So again, let's look at this question. Do you agree or disagree? Students should be allowed to bring their cell phones to school. Some people like to answer this question like this. They'll say, 
On the one hand, I think it's a good idea for students to bring their cell phones to school because then they can have, they can get in contact with their parents at any time in case there's an emergency. On the other hand, I think it's a bad idea for students to bring cell phones because they will easily get distracted in class and won't be able to focus on the material. Now, you can answer this way. There's nothing in the ETS TOEFL book that says you can't answer this way. The problem is that, first of all, you're not answering the question. You're not agreeing or disagreeing. You're saying, well, it's kind of 50-50. So that's one problem. The second problem is that since you're doing that kind of 50-50, agreed, uh, I don't agree, but I don't disagree, you're kind of repeating the same vocabulary, the same grammar. On the one hand, on the other hand, I think it's a good idea, but I think it's a bad idea because, because. So you see how you're kind of repeating the same vocabulary and grammar in both instances, and that hurts your score. So when you give a, when you take one side, I agree, I agree for this reason, and for example, I remember when I was in high school, and when you have a structure like that, you can show more vocabulary, show more grammar, and answer the question more accurately. So that's why I take a side and stick to it for question one. Question two, imagine you're a reporter. So this is a kind of mindset that you should have. This will help you organize your response. So if you look at a question two example, uh, this is one from TST Prep, there is a reading passage and you have to read the passage. It's a change to campus. Something's happening. There's some news. And then the audio, the, the listening, is two students, a man and woman, talking, reacting to the announcement, to the reading passage. This is just like a news story. If you ever watched the news before, usually a reporter reports on some event, some change, something's happening. Let's say there's a weather event. Let's say there's a big storm. They go to the beach, big waves, big storm, uh, lots of rain and wind. This is, there's a storm coming, it's the, the storm is called this. And so they report on the change, on the storm, and then ask for people's reactions. What are you doing about the storm? How do you feel? Are you staying? Are you leaving? How do you feel about the storm? Are you staying? Are you leaving? What are you doing? So they ask for people's reactions. That's just like what you have to do for this TOEFL speaking question too. You have an announcement, you talk about the news, and then you talk about the person's reaction, the man or the woman, depending on the question. So think like a reporter and it'll help you kind of organize your response better and give a stronger, and give a stronger answer. All right, so that's question two, the goal. Oh, and before I get to question three and four, I have to shout out speakerenglish.com. We have a 30-day TOEFL speaking plan. It actually goes for up to 90 days, so if you need more time, that's fine. But it's guaranteed to improve your score in 30 days. It has everything laid out so you know exactly what TOEFL speaking to practice every day. You don't have to worry about what to do. It's all set up for you, and it takes less than 20 minutes to do each day. Check it out, speakerenglish.com. I'm really proud of this and I, and I hope you guys uh, check it out and find it helpful. Okay, Let's check it out, Speaker English. Let me go back to the goals, your aim, how to improve your score by three points. So the third way for question three, your third goal is to imagine you're a teacher. The idea here is that you're listening to an academic topic and you're reading about it. So the reading passage is an introduction to the topic, in this case, bird migration. And then the listening passage, the teacher will explain bird migration with examples, with some history about bird migration, uh, something like that. And then you have to basically be the teacher. You have to speak for 60 seconds and summarize bird migration. And that's what a teacher does. You know, you start by saying, okay, this is what bird migration is, a general uh, introduction. And then you give two examples of bird migration. Okay, then there's the Canadian goose and this, this type of bird migrates, blah, blah, blah. And the other example is the uh, Brazilian hummingbird. And this bird migrates, you know, blah, 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 and then you talk about that one. So that's pretty much how you should organize your response is you give something general as an introduction and then specific examples, just like a teacher would. So 
That's why you should think like a teacher. And the last one is pretty similar. You're kind of thinking like a teacher. It's imagine explaining something to a child. Now, the reason why I say explaining to a child, yeah, I could have put imagine explaining that you're a teacher here too. I could have done that for three and four. The only reason I changed it a little bit here is because when you're speaking to a child, you have a bit more energy. Uh, you, you're more passionate, empathetic. You know, have you heard of bird migration before? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. So there are these Canadian geese and every winter that, you know, you don't have to speak like that. I want you to speak in a way that matches your personality. But you know, when I'm teaching, when I'm doing these videos, you know, I don't speak this way all the time, every day. You know, I, I speak a little bit, you know, more relaxed and casual. So I do have a different type of voice when I do these videos. And so I'm more excited, I'm more animated, I use my hands more. And so I encourage you to use, to do the same thing. If it helps, imagine explaining something to a child to help you get energized to speak and help you have more kind of emphasis on what you're saying and it will help you kind of find words and be able to speak for the whole 60 seconds. Now, if you actually wanna practice these goals and put them in action, check out this video here with a bunch of TOEFL speaking samples that you can listen and you could hear my feedback on and you can learn from. And you can also practice these questions on your own as well. Definitely check out that video. Uh, hit the subscribe button, it would help me a lot. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.